You never know. More on that is on the way right now. SPAR Director Shelly Regal is here. Hey, Miss Shelly, how are you today? I'm good. Good morning. Um, um, things are a mess down at the dog park and Stoner Boat Launch and stuff like that. What's the latest? Uh, it, it, how long till it goes down? Do you have any idea, I guess? I do not know how long. They thought it would be a quick, um, the river would recede quicker this time than we had in the past. And we're hoping by the, maybe by the end of the week or over the weekend. Yes, well, Stoner Boat Launch is closed, Hamels Park, Seabick and Dixon, uh, Riverfront Park. Our Riverview Park is also closed. We just had a lot of water, and um, all four of those parks have been affected. What a lot of concern in the community. This is the first big test for the dog park. What do you anticipate finding once the water's receding? What are you What are you looking at? What are you planning for? Well, we believe that the biggest you know challenge there will be uh, sand, as we had um, deposited you know on the walking trail in the 2015 flooding events, so sand, which we can deal with. Um, all the structures that were built there are, are built to withstand water. You don't have anything there that couldn't take some water. Um, you know, as from covering the dog park over the last many years, the dog park's location is because the Waterway Commission funded it. Um, it was chosen. To, it had to be on the riverfront, and... Um, that's why it's in that location, and I think when we built the the dog park, we knew that flooding was certainly a possibility. Now, I don't know nothing about floods or high water or anything like that, and it's good to know that the buildings were, were constructed to, to survive this kind of aqua onslaught. But as far yeah. as the landscaping of the area goes, the pond area, et cetera. Now, I, I don't know how much erosion or buildup or damage just to the to the grounds this kind of flooding can do. Can you give us some sort of insight? Well, what, we'll, what we found last time is we didn't suffer a lot of erosion because it, it wasn't flowing quickly on, you know, that was just overflow water. What we did find was, like I said, the river deposit lots of sand, that we can deal with. Um, we believe when we get in there, you know, all the pavilions on the concrete, we'll have to clean those. And we do anticipate, you know, once the water recedes, and I know people will want to see the dog park open that day, but we have to remember it, we're going to want to let it really good dry out, give us time to clean, give it time to dry out before we put people and animals back on the park just to protect it from, you know, tearing up the landscape any more than it would have to be. Shelly Shelley Regal with SPAR, Director of SPAR. This ain't, this, this ain't your first flood rodeo. <laughs> no, ma'am, it's not. <laughs> this, I hate to say it's not. This comes with a price tag, the cleanup of the sand, the damage to the parks, etc. How do mm-hmm. you plan for that? What, what kind of impact does this have on your budget? Well, until we really know the extent of the damage, um, I can't really tell you what, what that impact will be. A lot of it's manpower, and that, you know, the problem with that is that when manpower is taken away to clean up parks that have been flooded, we're not doing other things. So until we really can see what the damage um, and ex- assess that, it's hard to say what it's going to, the impact's going to be. We know at Seabick and Dixon, we did lots and lots of work to get that front of that park open. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be interested to see how it withstands this recent flooding event um riverfront park last time like i said sand was our biggest enemy so once the river recedes and we can go in and assess the damage or hopefully you know there won't be a lot of damage and we can then see how it's going to affect our budget speaking of riverfront park and i don't know if you can help me with this those fountains for the kids haven't been on in how long has it been it's been a while Yes, and that is because of the 2015 flooding um, did extensive damage. So it was very ironic. We were actually meeting last week to start talking about getting the waterfall back on and the fountains back on, and then we had this weather event happen. So this could, they, say, they could be damaged even further? Um, I think they were at the, we had removed all the components that were in there that could have been damaged. So. L- let's go back to Bickham Dixon Park again. Mm-hmm. A lot of folks say that's that's a lost cause. If you're pumping money into that park, it's just going to flood and flood and flood and flood. 
and, well, and could there be a better use for it? Have you all talked about that? Is that a possibility? Yes. The, the city has been working with um, the national parks and talking about a higher and better use for Seabig and Dixon. And all that's being used at Seabig and Dixon now, since the 2015 flood, is just the front portion. Mm-hmm. That gets you right to the boat dock. Yeah, I drove in there not too long ago, and I noticed that just that front little road, you can't even get to the back section anymore. And you think no. that you think that's closed for good? It's as far as city when under our management, absolutely. It's um, we're just going to leave the front portion open until we um, we have been working with several groups. Um, to talk about the best use for Seabick and Dixon in the future. When you say the best use in the future, what might that be other than uh, a spill area for the Red River? Um, we have been working with um, the national, like I said, National Parks and Wildlife to see if they're, I mean, it's a very important part of the city. It serves a big purpose in our city as far as um, not only habitat, but also for flooding, you know, these, and so we want to make sure that we use it for what its best use is. So sort of like a nature area that just fills up every yes. now and then like a bathtub. Yes, um, exactly. This is something that, and, and, and we've been talking about this on the show for a few days now. Uh-huh. The flooding seems to be something that, that is almost now like an annual occurrence at the city level do you guys talk about why i mean we've had heavy rainfall for extended periods before why is it why is it in the last four or five or six years or whatever the 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 time frame happens to be that that all of a sudden we seem to be having this annual flooding is that something that you guys talk about in your meetings we certainly talk about it i'm not like you i'm not a hydrologist i don't you know we Um, We believe it also because we've seen it over the last, I would, you know, we had the significant flood in 2015, but even before that we were seeing, you know, minor flooding that we had not seen previously. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm not the one to answer all these questions, but there are things that are different. You know, um, we get flooding from Lake Texoma, that area, um, not necessarily the rivers, not necessarily from the rain. We're actually we're dealing with, have been here dealing with two different events. You've got rising waters in the river that are caused not necessarily by the rainfall we get. It's exasperated by the rainfall. But we've also been dealing with flash flooding at the same time. You know, I just so, asked you a question that was way beyond your pay grade, and you did <laughs> yeah. and you did a hell of a job. Uh, well, I'm just, <laughs> and Shelley, yeah, you did. You asked. <laughs> Way beyond my pecker. <laughs> Shelly, one more time for all the people that are bitching about, oh, you put a dog park on the river. Hey, 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 city official. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> hit the hick to Jack Spring. Too, no, no, too late. Uh, all the people that are griping about you put a dog park on the riverfront, it's going to flood. Are you idiots? Blah, blah. You had to do it, right? That's where the money came from. Yes, ma'am. Um, we had no choice but to put it on the riverfront. The funding that um, was secured, you know, over 10 years ago, has it been that long? seven, eight, nine years ago, was secured from the Red River Waterway Commission. And one of the um, stipulations to use that money was it had to be on the riverfront. 